Please join me in welcoming Greg Nelson. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for welcoming me back to the Bay Area. I had the chance to live uh, both in San Francisco and in Oakland for about five years uh, before moving to the muggy confines of DC uh, back in 2008, 2009. And uh, I realized it had been about um, almost a year, more than a year, since I had had the chance to come back. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys uh, welcoming me with 100-degree muggy weather, which is exactly what I was trying to get away from. So I want to big, give a big thanks to uh, peers and to SOCAP for uh, pulling this all together. It's pretty exciting for us to be part of it. I'm really here today to, uh, to learn. Um, to get a chance to hear from you all as you're grappling with a lot of these uh, these, these these difficult challenges uh, in a in a growing growing area, a place where innovation is happening both uh, at the company level, but also uh, frankly the policy level. And I want to uh, uh, hear a little bit more about that today. Um, why is the White House uh, here? Why are we engaged? I think there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the most important is um, uh, those of you uh, have probably seen in the last couple of years, the president spent quite a bit of time talking about, about sharing. He talks about it in uh, terms of shared prosperity, shared opportunity, and shared responsibility. Uh, and that was the theme of the uh, 2012 campaign. It's been a theme of this administration. And how can we make sure that we are uh, breaking down barriers and providing opportunity uh, for citizens, for uh, all of you here and, and throughout the world, uh, to build a better community that's going to uh, enable and, and embody those kinds of uh, values. And I think there's real, real opportunities in what you're doing um, and real opportunities in how it's starting to remake the map in, in cities across the globe. Um, as David mentioned, the, the, these innovations bring up challenges and questions that it sounds like you uh, really tackled and struggled with yesterday around, around access, around equity, around uh, how do we ensure that uh, this is a, a, a kind of an opportunity that everybody can participate in, um, and that, frankly, that, uh, that, that the, the policy world can keep up with the innovations that you guys are creating. Um, that's something that uh, in, in DC, uh, we try to make sure that, that uh, we uh, are uh, thinking through what's happening out here, trying to catch up with everything that, that is going on, but ensuring that um, your world is what's driving it, the, the, the driving down the cost of consumer interactions, driving down, uh, enabling opportunities for consumer choice, uh, uh, resisting the, the chance to add more friction into a system and new markets that, that are providing consumers and uh, retailers and supporters with additional opportunity. Uh, we want to make sure we learn a lot more about what's happening before we go out and think about what, what our role is going to be. We've already had some instances where it's come up, uh, even, even as regulation has, uh, has, uh, has, has um, uh, uh, not been coming from the federal side. Two examples of that are uh, when Hurricane Sandy hit in uh, the Northeast, um, the uh, Federal Emergency Management Administration, FEMA, um, gives out housing vouchers to help make sure that everybody who lost a home in, in a natural disaster gets a chance to find another location, a place to stay, whether it's a hotel, um, an apartment building, whatever they can do. Uh, and Airbnb stepped up, and um, uh, actually every Airbnb member stepped up and started offering their homes. So FEMA um, uh, wasn't, wasn't something they'd ever confronted before. This is a significant uh, uh, major national disaster and an opportunity where the sharing community uh, really stepped up and provided housing for these individuals who lost their homes. And we were able to work with FEMA uh, to allow those housing vouchers to be used in Airbnb facilities, which was an exciting and new innovation for where we've gone. That's the kind of thing that I think we're going to see a lot more of. Um, uh, on my way over here this morning, a question uh, came up thinking about procurement, federal procurement. Should uh, uh, I have the ability and when, when I'm spending one of some of the trillion dollars of federal procurement by, by, uh, by, by catching a ride over here, should that be reimbursable? Should IT procurement be something that, um, that sharing, uh, sorry, proc federal procurement broadly be something that the sharing economy companies can participate in and can they be part of the, 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 the federal spend? So all kinds of questions that we're going to have to grapple with. My main point for today is um, I really appreciate you guys are doing this. This is a huge uh, um, set of issues to try to get ahead of, and I'm glad to be here and participate and learn from you. I think the opportunity here is to spend as much time thinking about the questions of access, equity, opportunity, shared prosperity now on the front end of, of this happening so that we can have as much innovation in policy making and innovation in, um, in the way that we interact with, with, uh, with, with continuing to help you all open markets um, on the front end rather than, than all on the back end. So that's why we're here. Um, I'm leading a project now that will try to help look at some of this uh, um, from the perspective of the federal side uh, and the White House, and I'm excited to learn from you all and participate today. So thanks for having me, and keep it going.